Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. Earth observing satellites provide a wealth of information on our planet, helping us to better forecast the weather, understand natural processes, and monitor our environment. While we often focus on the technology behind these incredible missions and the applications of their data, the data themselves and how they are collected, processed, delivered, and archived is not often in the limelight, although crucial to the success of these missions. With me in the studio today is Nicholas Hanofsky, the head of ground segments and operations under ESA's Earth Observation Programs Directorate. Nicholas, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, of course, the subject today is big data. What does this term mean for you? Um, for me, and um, I think in Earth observation in particular, big data means a combination of aspects uh, related to the volume, the overall volume of the data that we are dealing with, uh, the velocity in which we are transferring data, in which we are distributing data, um, then the aspect of variety of data. Uh, we are dealing with very different kinds of data these days. And uh, finally, also with the aspect of uh, what we call veracity of the data, meaning that we care about the data content and the integrity and the robustness of the data that we are dealing with. And the big question revolving around big data these days is how to make uh, the best um, use of big data in terms of generating information and products that are useful for, for us in, in general. Okay. Now, ESA has been launching space missions for decades. Why is big data such an important topic today? Um, for us, um, I think it's coming with the realization that we're entering um, the third generation of Earth observation missions in, in particular. And the aspect that uh, with that third generation, and in particular the, um, the launch of the Sentinel uh, satellite, um, uh, se the first Sentinel satellite uh, just a few months ago, uh, we are uh, facing a flood of, of, of data, continuously produced, continuously processed, continuously distributed. And that uh, uh, generates a, a number of completely new challenges for us. And uh, together with the aspect of trying to um, bring uh, data from other missions into the overall picture and to cross-blend cross uh, data into something useful and um, significant is, is uh, ever more important. And this happens, uh, interestingly, against the background of what we call an increasing uh, free and open data policy. So free and open data policy means that things are even more accessible than they used to be in the past and the potential of this data is increasing dramatically. Okay. Now coming up this week is the Big Data from Space Conference, which will be taking place at ESA's Ezrin site in Frascati in Italy. What challenges will be addressed at this conference in terms of handling this big data? Um, I think one has to realize that since big data is such a broad topic uh, these days, it's important to generate uh, what I would call a common frame of reference in terms of communication, in terms of terminology that's being used, and in terms of the concepts that are useful for us in order to uh, deal with big data and to generate uh, the applications and the tools that we need in order to deal with it in the most efficient and uh, profitable way um, as, a, as a society, I guess. Um, the other aspect, uh, I think, in terms of challenge is prioritization. There are so many ideas, so many um, ways to leverage big data these days that we need to develop a sense of priority. What are the most important aspects to deal with first and then uh, fall into a logical sequence of activities um, that um, facilitate the use of, of that data. Now, what about long-term data preservation? Of course, we have data for decades, and we will have more data coming in the future, especially with the Sentinels and these new Earth observation missions, this third generation, as you say. Is this an important topic? Will this be addressed as well? In particular, in Earth observation, uh, data from um, previous generations of Earth observation uh, uh, represent a, a treasure uh, in terms of uh, their implications for climate modeling, for example, and, and other applications. And uh, therefore, we have a obligation and, and a strong mandate, of course, uh, to make sure that this data is available. 
uh, but not only available, uh, it also needs to be um, um, supported and needs to be complemented by a set of tools and um, uh, processes which allow us still to make use of that data, to analyze the data and to translate it into something um, that, is, that is again useful for us as a, as a, as a society. Okay. Now what are the other main objectives that will be addressed at this conference? Um, one key aspect here is to sort out what are the competences that have been already developed, which expertise is available that we can leverage in order to um, to, to progress in, 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 in dealing with uh, the challenges of increased velocity, volume, variety and veracity, as I mentioned at the beginning. And um, that, uh, that expertise needs to be harnessed in a way that uh, we um, uh, try to, to, to cooperate and to, to uh, use networking as, as something um, to get the optimum benefit out of that um, general topic and, and uh, the general approach to big data as a, as a, as a subject. Okay. Well, Nick, best of luck with your conference. Thank you very much. And thanks for joining us today. And to our viewers, remember to learn more about space and about our planet. You can visit our website at www.isa.int. From the ESA Web TV Studios, I'm Kelsey Brennan-Wessels. <laughs>